So, so uh, biodiversity is a material consideration uh, in the planning process. And according to the NERC Act, uh, local planning authorities have to have regard uh, to conserving uh, biodiversity. And I won't be going into uh, more detail on that, but there are various policies and legislation uh, that cover different aspects of uh, protecting and enhancing biodiversity and protected species. Um, and we have an overview in our website if you're interested in more detail uh, on the policies and legislation. So in terms of the development management process, uh, biodiversity fits in and needs to be taken into account in all stages. Um, and not just the decision making. So for example, if uh, appropriate attention is given to uh, biodiversity matters in the pre-application stage, uh, that will allow uh, for appropriate um, avoidance, mitigation, compensation and enhancement measures to be uh, in place early on. So um, when it comes to assessing the impact of uh, development, of the potential impacts of uh, development uh, on biodiversity. Uh, an ecological consultant usually will start with a preliminary ecological appraisal, and uh, a desk study is an important component of this preliminary ecological assessment, and should include, among other things, um, the, uh, the use of the existing uh, biological records. Um, so Giggles data search report service provides information on the uh, evidence base that is available on the existing records that are available uh, for a specific uh, sites in the surrounding area. And it's an important component of the impact assessment. Uh, but that there are many factors affecting whether um, uh, there is a comprehensive ecological assessment. Uh, and whether a data search uh, report is included or not. So some examples are um, uh, that it could depend on the local planning authorities scrutiny, whether the local planning authority has an ecologist providing planning advice or not, and on the developer many times. Um, it depends on ecological consultants following best practice. And if they do follow best practice, uh, a data search report should be part of the um, of the assessment, as we said, and inform it. However, uh, a project by the CLA uh, in 2016 uh, found out that about 18% of planning applications in a one year period in London uh, should have been informed by a biodiversity data search um, based on certain criteria. Uh, but they found that only 1% of validated applications actually were supported by one. So there is still lots of work to be done uh, uh, in relation to biodiversity data being appropriately considered in the process. So in terms of our data search report, uh, as Victoria also mentioned, um, they are um, very generally split into three uh, categories. Uh, we have a data set report for clients, which are used mostly ecological consultants. And this service um, is run in collaboration with a company called Accountability. And we have also a data set report, which, which we deliver in-house uh, for partners and their contractors and uh, for community groups and members of the public. So this is uh, what the data search report looks like, and it provides comprehensive in information on biodiversity and open spaces for a specific area. And uh, the report includes information on statutory sites and non-statutory sites, including um, proposed sinks, uh, proposed sites of importance for nature conservation mm -hmm. and geodiversity sites and summarized information on species, uh, habitats, and open spaces. But uh, the complete data search is uh, for internal use only, and um, only summarized information and highlights from it can be shared. Uh, so an ecological consultant, for example, cannot submit it with a preliminary ecological appraisal, but we also supply this uh, data search report summary uh, which provides information on uh, when the data set report was, um, was carried out, 
uh, when uh, the site and the radius and the import important features that were found within the radius. So moving on, as we uh, discussed briefly, uh, this uh, data search reports um, are an integral part of an impact assessment, uh, but uh, there are many factors affecting uh, whether they are actually included and uh, taken into account. Uh, and there are different roles um, in influencing um, the planning process in this respect. So, um, in terms of local planning authorities, um, it's important for them to have access to data so they know uh, when, a planning when a planning application can potentially uh, affect uh, biodiversity. And um, currently, most of local planning authorities in London are um, uh, Google's uh, partners, uh, which means that they have access to Google's data holdings. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the planning departments uh, are aware and they make full use of the data. And another very important uh, thing is uh, ecological expertise within local planning authorities. Um, it's extremely important and it can make, make a huge difference. So uh, this is a list uh, from a survey we ran for the biodiversity evidence better outcomes for planning projects, where we asked local planning authorities uh, about biodiversity in planning and how they uh, use biodiversity data. And this uh, list shows uh, some of the uses in the development management process. So some of the um, examples were uh, that uh, biodiversity data were used to identify ecological constraints, uh, to identify places of protected uh, or priority species, uh, to justify when ecological appraisal was needed, to check submitted information, confirm data searches as evidence base, as evidence base when commenting on planning applications or defending planning appeals, and to inform targeted enhancements and planning conditions. So they are uh, used. Uh, in various aspects uh, in planning. And as we already touched upon, uh, ecological consultants uh, can influence positively uh, the process by uh, following best practice, uh, consulting uh, information in the data search reports when assessing ecological impacts of a development, uh, making informed recommendations based on the existing evidence base and the local context. Another very important role that uh, ecological consultants uh, can play is uh, with data sharing. So uh, an ecological consultant might, might commission a data search report from Google, but then they will go out to the site and uh, carry out surveys themselves. And uh, they will collect uh, more uh, data uh, at that stage. So um, again, according to the best, uh, professional best practice, they would require to share that information with the local environmental records center. And with this process, they help strengthen the evidence base, the evidence base and the inform uh, planning and development projects in the future as well. And last but not least, um, members of the public can also influence the process by taking part in the decision-making process at the local level learn more about the local biodiversity and highlighting the importance of access to data and ecological expertise in local planning authorities. So um, our data search service is not a static um, uh, product. So we, we constantly review it. Uh, we receive feedback. We recently started a big uh, customer feedback uh, program as well. Um, and we update, improve and enhance it based on the feedback we receive. And our goal is through this process and our data search service to achieve better outcomes for biodiversity. And it's a cycle. Um, so as I said, we're constantly reviewing it. We are also looking into having a map in our website where we will be, we will be showing the number of um, data search reports for uh, commission per local planning authority. Uh, so watch this space. Um, so I really hope this was a useful um, overview 
of the ways that biodiversity data um, can be used in planning and of our data search report and uh, service. Thank you. <laughs>